Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Enscape for Mac video. Now following on the hot on my heels of my last video where I showed how cool Enscape is on the Mac platform now, I was really trying to find a workflow from Vectorworks, which as you know is my favorite design software. So I've done some experimenting and I think I've cracked it. I found a really nice workflow to get from Vectorworks to SketchUp to Enscape fairly seamlessly. So enjoy the video and I hope you like what you see. Thanks for watching everybody. Hi everybody, Jonathan here with a Vectorworks and Enscape tutorial today. And this is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be showing how to make an Enscape workflow work with your Vectorworks files on the Mac. Now, as you know, Enscape is now available on the Mac platform. And basically uh, for now, it's working with SketchUp only. What I'm gonna do is show you how you can get this to work with your Vectorworks models. And here's a nice example that I'm using, which is the Enscape sample Vectorworks model. So just before we hop into Enscape and I'll show you how to get across, um, let me just show you a couple of things in Vectorworks. As you know, I absolutely love Vectorworks 3D and I really love the sort of speed and modeling and the kind of rendering capabilities that it has built in. But there are times when you just wanna take it to the next level. So what I'm gonna do is let's turn off the site and the vegetation. Just before we kind of get into the project, um, I just want to show you a couple of things on the model itself. So what I'm gonna do is click onto the clip cube. And if I just kind of just vertically clip through the model, there we go, you can kind of see this is a really nice model that Enscape have prepared, their example model. It's actually got a bit of lighting in, um, but it's also got some really nice assets in already. Now these are generally mesh based assets. I'm not sure how they were imported, but as you can see, they actually look really great in Vectorworks. Um, I've set up a couple of save views as well, just to give you a bit of an impression on uh, the model and how good it can look in Vectorworks as well. Let me just go through my save views here. I'll double click to access a couple of those. Now, just before we do hop into Enscape, I would like to make the point that Vectorworks have really improved the rendering quite dramatically in the 2023 version. So if you look at the quality of the render at the moment, it looks pretty good. But if I just drop down into shaded options, you'll notice three new options, um, as well as drawing the edges, which I can go for that kind of graphical look. If I want it a bit more realistic, I can enable now environmental lighting, uh, environmental reflections, and watch the floor now, object reflections. So absolutely amazing. I think I'll turn off the environmental lighting just for a second. Um, and you'll see that now, even in shaded mode, Vectorworks has these absolutely stunning, let me just get my walkthrough tool, uh, reflections that will basically really kind of improve the look and feel of your shaded renderings. So while this isn't sort of quite Enscape level of quality, uh, as a sort of graphics card sort of shaded rendering mode, this is absolutely lovely. And if I do want to, um, one really nice little feature of Vectorworks, of course, is the multiple views. So I'm just gonna click on my multiple views button and you can see that I've got each of these sort of lovely views here rendered with those nice sort of settings. And I can just give you a really kind of nice experience of sort of navigating through those spaces. So I'll do many, many more videos on Vectorworks and the rendering capabilities uh, that you're gonna find in Vectorworks soon. Um, so if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe and we'll look forward to running through those with you. But for now, let's have a look at how we can export the model and get it across to SketchUp and then Enscape to make some amazing renderings. Now, there's a few different exports that we can use, and I've been experimenting with some of these. Um, I've tried a few, actually, so I'm going to talk you through my process in exporting the model. So just before we go ahead and export, what I'm going to do is just turn off some of the extra layers that I'm not worried about exporting, like the site and the vegetation. Um, also, you can see some of the Enscape assets here. Um, I don't need those, so I'm just going to click my visibility tool and turn those off. Excellent. So all I've really got is the building and the furniture inside the building. So if we go to file, we go to export, uh, you'll notice that there's a really wide range of export capabilities that Vectorworks has. And I have tried a few of these. Now for smaller items, things like bits of furniture, the 3D Studio and the Collada export work quite well. But what I found is they just don't seem to work very well for big models like this. Um, so I'm going to choose the FBX. Uh, format for exporting. So let's go ahead and choose that. Now you can see all the various settings that I'm going to use here. We're going to go for the native organization, all objects and all layers, and all of these included as well. 
let's just go ahead and create a brand new folder. Let's just call this Enscape. Okay, and let's click OK and export. I'm going to change the name of it because it's a bit long-winded at the moment. Let's just make this a bit shorter as well. So let's call this Enscape Sample FBX. Good, okay, so when we click Save, you'll see it takes a few seconds to export both the geometry, but also uh, hopefully the materials as well will have gone. Okay, right, so on to our next step. So the next step is we can't just import this straight into uh, SketchUp, because unfortunately SketchUp does not import FBX files directly. As I've said, I've tried a few other file formats here as well, and these do work in terms of uh, importing some basic models. But they tend to break down when the model gets as big or as complicated. You can see the Enscape pop-up coming up. Let's suppress that just for now. Okay, so uh, really just to show you that if you go to import, these are the file formats that SketchUp will import. So we can do the 3D Studio and the Collada will come in, um, but I found those to be a little bit unreliable for big models. So what we're gonna do is open up a really cool new little bit of software that I've discovered called Transmuter. Now Transmuter is a really nice little application for converting all sorts of file formats into SketchUp. And it's really quite simple to use. So all we need to do, you can see it'll import 3D Studio, uh, DAE, FBX, OBJ, and SCL, and convert all of those to native SketchUp files. And all I need to do to bring the file in is click Browse. So let's select our new file. And here is our FBX. By the way, the textures have all been unpacked now. Okay, so that's really good. That took a little while to uh, go through. But let's click Open. And basically, it'll import the FBX file, and then we'll be able to convert it to a native SketchUp file format. Now, there's quite a lot of stuff that you can do. Um, but one thing that you would definitely want to do is you'll notice at the moment it's come in with the wrong axis. Now, this often happens, but don't worry, it's very easy to sort out. Just change the up axis uh, on this particular model to a Z axis, lovely. And you can see we're now sorted in the right axis. Now, you will also notice there's lots of other commands in here about the number of triangles and things like this. Um, and also, you can really simplify the mesh. Now, I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to basically click Transmute. Uh, if I do want to, by the way, in the preview, I can show those edges as well. This will give you a bit of a clue to how meshy your geometry is. Let's just go for it and click Transmute and save this as a native SketchUp file .skp. Here we go. So we're just going to save that into the same root folder. And that will take a few seconds to save. And then, hopefully, we will be able to open this up in SketchUp. And once we're in SketchUp, we'll have a look at how we can access Enscape for Mac on SketchUp. So we're there. Let's go for it. So let's go File. Let's go Open. And let's bring in the new Enscape that we've just, uh, there it is, SKP. You can see all the textures in there. Let's just click Open with those and see what happens. It will take a while to load in, of course. So it's a pretty big file, um, but again, my Mac M1 Pro seems to be handling this uh, no problem. We get a version warning, and that's fine. It's just saying it's in an old version. But if we click onto the Fit to Objects, let's do that. Fantastic, look at that. We've got our model, and it looks great, actually. It looks really good. You can see all the geometries come in quite nicely. And um, if I do want to, of course, I can just go in and turn the edges off as well to get that slightly more realistic look. But here we are in SketchUp from our Vectorworks model, um, maybe a little bit of Z fighting on some of those surfaces, we could probably sort that out. But we'll see how this plays out once we kind of get into um, Enscape in a second. So let's just sort of pan our view and get ready to export this off to Enscape. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, Vectorworks to SketchUp workflow that has been a really nice little benefit so far, but the big benefit is yet to come. So now we start the magic by clicking the wonderful Start Enscape button and just wait for it to load the model from SketchUp into Enscape. But remember, this model was originally from Vectorworks. So Vectorworks to Enscape on the Mac is our workflow. And just let that load up. It's going to take a few seconds to load the model as ever. Um, while it's loading, let me just kind of minimize my SketchUp file over to the side here. See if I can dock that halfway. Okay, and over on the right side, you can see the Enscape uh, here, just with a little updating wheel as well. Let's just stretch that out once it's loaded. So that's the first step. You've just got to get from Vectorworks into uh, SketchUp via Transmuter as the FBX file format. We've got SketchUp here on the left side with our model, and we've now got Enscape um, on the right-hand side. 
Now, one of the nice things, of course, about Enscape is the fact that you can click onto the Synchronize View button at any time. And then if we get into orbit mode, as we sort of orbit around our SketchUp model, we'll see those lovely renders occurring in Enscape as well. But what you will notice is um, Enscape is a sort of refining renderer, so iterative. So what that means is, as soon as you kind of let go, you'll notice that um, the refinement of the image becomes almost instant, actually. So very, very rapid. So I really love the way you can kind of basically play around with the uh, view in SketchUp and have that synchronized view in Enscape as well. As soon as you let go, that refinement process will kick in. Now, you can also do a really nice thing here, um, which is basically to save views. Okay, so if I want to do that, I just go up to my scenes. So let's bring up our scenes dialog and let's just click create scene. And we'll save that as a scene in SketchUp. Okay, so that will take a few seconds just to record that scene. There it is. Now, if we go over to Enscape now, we should find, if we go to the scene manager, here is the very first scene. And if I double click on it, of course, it's the same one. So that's really, really cool. Now, we can also do a similar thing, which means um, if I actually kind of do some walking around, let's uh, move through my model a bit more. So what I'm going to do is hold shift down and the W key just to sort of speed into my um, screen. It's going quite slowly, but I'm quite far away at the moment. And you can see it is actually kind of rendering in real time. So what I'm gonna do is pop open my view management button and I can click create view. Now this is very cool in that it will actually create a view, which will also go down into SketchUp. So here's my original view. Here's my scene from SketchUp. That's cool. And if we just kind of minimize out of that for a second and I go back to SketchUp, you'll now see the new uh, view Again, here's the SketchUp one. Here's the new one that I created directly in Enscape. And I really like the way you get like a little animation between them. So basically you can use uh, either application to sort of move around the view and sort of frame up some nice renderings. Um, when you're ready, you just simply need to click Create Scene and that will create it both in Enscape and also SketchUp as, as well. Um, you can see it's looking pretty good already, but if I go up into the visual settings, just wanna talk about a few things here. Now, as long as we haven't got the synchronized view button on um, with SketchUp, what we'll be able to do is actually do things like change the field of view. Okay, so that's really nice. So we've got a very sort of wide angle here to get the whole building, or we can kind of pan in and get a slightly sort of more natural 82 degree view, which looks cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if you do want to, again, you've got the outlines. So if I've just applied some outlines on here, you can get a really nice sort of graphical, almost cartoony type style. And if you keep it pretty subtle, that can actually give a really nice look as well. Now you do have the different modes in here, things like the white card look. Um, just take that a second to actually re-render. As you can see with Enscape, this process of refinement is very rapid and it goes from looking, you know, quite sort of uh, noisy to really quite smooth in a few seconds, quite dramatically. Um, so I would definitely recommend with that one, you probably want to turn some light edges on in order to get a rendering out there. Now, if we do want to slide through the time of the day, we can do, but let's just have a quick look at this little setting here, because I quite like the look of that. Um, and what I'm going to do is just go into image. Now, I'll tone down the saturation because it was clearly looking a bit too coloured, and that looks really cool. Okay, I might also want to play auto contrast on, just to get a slightly nicer sort of contrast. Other than that, you can kind of play around manually with the things like the highlights and the shadows yourself. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let's click and create that as a save view. And I'm going to link that as a preset. Now let's just go and create that one there. Okay, now I'm going to go and basically do the same view, but I'm basically going to go to normal rendering and turn the edges off. Now in this view, I probably also want to do a bit of color correction. So I want to bring up the colors a little bit more in this view, but I also might want just to cool them down a bit. Um, don't want to go too bright. I want to kind of change that color gradient a little bit there. So you really have got the full range, anything from sort of grayscale, which actually looks really cool, uh, up to super vivid. So your choice is where you kind of see it. Now, basically you've also got some other nice aspects, things like bloom, and you'll notice the bloom around things like the windows and those shiny objects in the scene and things that are quite light. That can give a nice effect. And of course, you've got the vignetting. Uh, ever popular with CGI artists, whether you want that sort of vignetting on the edges of the image and so on as well. Chromatic aberration is another setting that I love about Enscape. Um, it just gives quite a subtle sort of effect on the final renders. So I'm gonna leave that and I'll just reset those to where they were before. 
Apart from the vignetting, I will take down a notch or two. Good, okay, so we've touched on some of these before in other videos. So there's all these other things about things like Enscape, but I'm just gonna drop through to output and go to uh, full 4K quality, you can see here. And then I'm just going to click on name my folder. So let's just go through and drop those into a new rendering folder here. And we'll call this renders. So we'll review these as ever at the end of the video. Let's click open. So I'm done now with my visual settings. So I want to just basically click on to start export. And let's just go for it. I'll click the standard naming. So basically, Enscape will start rendering up the image, and already you'll notice that the preview on screen that you get gets dramatically improved from where we were just a second ago in the preview. So do remember the preview is the preview. Uh, it will always look a lot better when we get the final rendering, and it renders pretty fast. Um, these were sort of 30 to 40 seconds, depending on the scene and things like the complexity. So that's done. Um, we can now easily sort of pan around our view. So let's just spin around our view kind of pan across a bit and just sort of see how rapidly we can get some really nice renders out. Let's just come back a bit and get that nice shiny bowl in the scene there. Let's just go and render out another view. Let's click render. And while we're chatting, um, that will be rendered out. There's a couple more things I just wanted to focus on uh, before we finish this video. So I wanted to show you that you can easily do two really cool things to enhance your model even further. Now, the first one, of course, is the Enscape Asset Library. And this is really nice and you can basically bring in additional assets into the model and just pop, drop those into your SketchUp file. So let's take a nice bottle here, just load that in and basically drop it on. Now it looks like there's a bit of a problem with the scaling. Um, so that should be something I could probably fix by doing the import correctly. Or I could actually scale this asset up in SketchUp. So definitely something we'll need to work on. I can see it's way too small at the moment. And then that probably is to do with the transmuting of the file. So maybe I need to look at the um, scaling next time I bring this in. But in terms of actually scaling that up, we'll go to the scale objects and let's see if we can just sort of scale this up a uh, hundred times. Yeah, okay, so that was definitely too big. Let's try 10 times. And that looks perfect. Okay, good, so I'm pretty happy. So we've dropped that asset in and you can see there it sits on the table. There it is in Enscape. So it's just a basic a proxy. Okay, so that's easy to add more props. Okay, the next thing I just wanted to talk about was materials. So to do this, I'm going to click onto the materials editor and you'll see all of the uh, materials that have come in and they're actually quite nicely named, which is actually good. So if we were able to drag this dialog a bit wider, we could see the names just about here. You can see the full name. But if I search, if I search for floor, pretty much I'm going to find the concrete floor there. Okay, great. So now we've got the concrete floor, we can play around with things like the uh, height maps and the texture maps. But what we're really keen to do is I'm just keen to get a bit more shine in that floor. So I'm just going to reduce the roughness. And you can immediately see in the Enscape, I've got a slightly more sort of polished concrete uh, view now. And that's enough to make, you know, a significant difference to my rendering. So it's definitely something we can play around with, the materials and put some more kind of shine and uh, quality on. But you can see these lovely assets now that I dropped in, albeit we had a bit of a problem with the scaling at the beginning. So if you do like the idea of sort of uh, improving your Vectorworks model that you've imported into um, Enscape or SketchUp, that's all you need to do. Let's do another little render here. Just render that one out as well. So what we'll do, we will review uh, all of these renderings at the end. But I really hope you've enjoyed this video to really show you how to use Enscape with Vectorworks on the Mac at this current time. Now, hopefully Vectorworks and Enscape will be working together natively on the Mac soon. But until then, this is a pretty good workflow. And as you can see, I can create some wonderful renderings from my Enscape uh, and Vectorworks models together. So thanks for watching, everybody. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and we'll play out with the final images.